when things were really bad 30 loggers in the Olympic National Forest are having a heated argument. They should have been out of the forest two days ago, but now that they're stuck there, they want to know how to get out. The person in charge, Perkin, suggests that someone hike out and bring help, but one of the dyers doesn't want to wait. He wants to take a chance and move right away, despite Perkin's warnings. Everyone else agrees with him, and Perkin has no choice but to let them go. Perkin gives him a hand, but before they can move forward, a swarm of insects attacks them both. It seems that neither man makes it out of the forest, and the Federal Forest Service has given up on the case of the 30 missing loggers. Fox Mulder, an FBI agent, has done a lot to get his hands on this case, and now he is telling his colleague Dana Scully about it. Doug Spinney and Stephen Teague are eco-terrorists who put spikes in trees, damage logging equipment, and stop loggers from doing their jobs. Two weeks ago, a logger radio message said that monkey wrenchers were on the move. After a week, all radio communication stopped, so the logger company asked the Federal Forest Service to look into the situation. Both the lumber company and the Federal Forest Service think that these monkey wrenchers may have something to do with the disappearance of the loggers. Steve hears noises coming from inside the house, so he goes in with the gun and finds Doug Spinney eating the leftovers from the plates. When Steve sees Doug Spinney holding the gun, he asks his men what they think is going on. Doug tells him that he doesn't know what happened to his men, but it's likely that the same thing will happen to them after the sun goes down. Fox comes in and tells Steve to stop arguing with Doug and hear Doug's side of the story. Doug tells them that darkness is their enemy and that the most important thing right now is to get that generator working. When Fox asks him why he thinks darkness is their enemy, Doug heads outside to work on the generator. Doug says he doesn't know what it is, but that it comes out at night, knocks a man off his feet, and eats him alive. Steve doesn't believe him, but the other three do after seeing what happened in the forest while Doug was eating. Fox asks, what's been going on? Doug speaks up and tells them that they are from a camp two valleys away, that one of their friends died, and that they are now a group of three. He says that his friend Teak was eaten alive in the dark, and that their truck doesn't have a battery, so he went to the logger's camp to steal one. Doug then gets mad at Steve for cutting down trees that have been marked and set aside as protected. This means that what Steve's company has been doing is against the rules. Larry asked Steve if he knew about it while he was listening to Doug. Steve said he didn't, and he was about to leave. Doug told him not to go out at night because of the unknown creature. Steve asks him why the creature doesn't come get them inside the house. Doug doesn't know exactly why, but he says that it seems to be afraid of the light. Then, to show that Doug is making up the whole story, Steve asks him why the creature doesn't come get them. Steve goes outside with his gun. Once he's outside, he tries to provoke whatever it is by calling it out. Since nothing has attacked him, Steve threatens to press murder charges against Doug and struts back inside. Fox tells Dana that they should sleep with the lights on that night, but no one notices that millions of bugs are swarming behind the tree trunks. The next morning, Doug takes them to the deforested part of the forest and shows Larry the old, marked trees that have already been cut down. It turns out that the Federal Forest Service marks the trees, and only the ones with a blue X are supposed to be cut down. However, in front of them is a fallen tree with an orange axe that is at least 100 years old. Fox sees a strange tree ring in the tree stump and tells them about it. Each tree ring is supposed to show how much rain fell in the area where the tree grew. Looking at this tree ring, Larry has no idea what it could be and gets ready to take a core sample of the tree ring to find out more. Steve is annoyed that they are focusing on the tree stump instead of using their energy to find his missing loggers. When the other three refuse to question Doug, Steve decides to hike down to Larry's truck and find people who can help. Back at the camp, they take a closer look at the core sample and find tiny bugs living in that yellow tree ring. This makes no sense to Larry since insects and parasites are always attracted to living things. Doug's only idea is that these bugs have been sleeping for hundreds of years and that the logging activity woke them up and made them hungry. Meanwhile, Steve goes to where the truck was left and tries to fix the wiring, but it's getting dark and a large group of glowing bugs are coming from the sky in his direction. Steve quickly locks himself in the truck, but the truck gets stuck in the middle of nowhere, and a boulder is now in the way of the driver's side door, so he can't get out. The bugs get in through the vent and fill the truck with bugs that eat people. Steve is fighting for his life, and his screams are getting quieter and quieter. Meanwhile, Dana is always watching the bugs and notices that they don't move when there's light. Since tree rings show how the weather was in the past, Fox realizes that something strange must have happened in the past to make such an unusual ring. He thinks that in that season, there might have been a volcanic eruption on the mountain. Fox goes up to him. Doug wants to help his friends, who are two valleys away in a car that won't start and has almost no gas. When he says he'll come back for them in the morning anyway, Fox lets him go. Fox fixes the transmission radio and calls for help, 
but the message doesn't get through and the generator shuts off. When Fox and Dana go to check on the generator, they find that Larry has turned it off to save the last bit of gas they have. When they ask him about the gallon of gas, he tells them the truth about Doug going to save his friend, but now their generator only has a quarter tank and Larry isn't sure if they can make it. Larry doesn't want to use the gas to send a message that might not be heard because the generator can't be counted on. Fox starts sealing up every hole in the house, and when night comes and Dana is lying in bed, she sees green bugs coming through the dark bottom of the wall. When the shadow falls on her hands, she sees millions of green bugs on them. Terrified, she stumbles back and almost breaks the only working light bulb. Doug has finally come back to get them after failing to save his friends. He tells them that help is on the way because he radioed for it. They hurry to leave the forest before night falls, but the Caltrops Doug and his friend Set hit the truck tire, forcing them to stop. When Doug gets out of the truck to check on the tire, he is attacked by a swarm of bugs. 